I was reading some of the comments and Mary asked me, is hybrid gel the same as poly gel? We're gonna talk about that while I do hybrid gel on tips. Let's get started. So I've completely removed the enhancements that I had on here to prepare for the tips. Usually I use forms, kind of come to like some tips. And these ones I'm gonna use in particular, I do like because they're very curvy. They kind of have a pinched look right out of the gate. So I've actually sized them up. They're sitting here on this file. I put them only on the file so you can actually see them when they're sitting on the towel or anything like, they're hard to see. I can't even really see them on the file. So I size them up for each and every finger and we're going to fit them on each and every one. Okay, so I'm just gonna get me specs. And I've got some nail glue. Now you can either put the glue on your finger or on the tip. I prefer to put it on the tip just because the tip might slide around. Just a quick tip about tips. When you're putting a tip on, you do want to pre-size them. Actually, you're better to be a little bit bigger than a little bit smaller because these products shrink a little and you don't want to have it a little bit small and then it shrinks more and then it's not fitting on the side and you have a gap. That would be bad. So have it a little bit bigger and then when it shrinks a little, it'll still fit in there. But I like these tips because they fit quite snug. They have a very strong curve. So I usually pre-fit it, make sure it feels comfortable because once you stick it down once, you don't really have a lot of room. Once it's stuck, you can't move it after that. You just have a little bit of wiggle room once that glue goes down there and you put it on there and you can fit it just within a few seconds. So I have prepped my nail, everything's ready to go, but I didn't prep and prime and don't do that yet. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly put these on. some pressure. You can actually see the glue seeping around there and just hold it for a few seconds. your fingertips just don't keep it on there for too long because if there's any glue on there you might glue yourself together I felt a little resistance the thumb is not happy I think I'm gonna redo that again take to that stuff to glue on there. It really is just a matter of a few seconds. It's just like crazy glue, right? Oh, right. Crazy glue for nails. Yeah. Yeah, I always check the angle too to make sure it's not swooping down too far or going too straight or, goodness, going upwards. That looks pretty good. I don't like me thumb. Okay. Let's just do the pinky. easy to get too much saturated on a little tiny finger like this. I'm trying to hold the finger steady so I can press against each other, but it's hard on a pinky. That's the hardest because you got your hand over top of it, so it's hard to see if it's straight or not. I've actually been wearing nails quite short and square for some time, probably two months. So I'm kind of craving this long nail, so I'm gonna leave these, I like them. Now this thumb, I'm a little skeptical about, but 
when I look down, I don't see any gap there. It looks really good. So I'm just gonna tighten up my glue bottle. And the reason why I do that right away is because this stuff can dry really fast. So the reason why we're using tips and forms, the reason why we use either one of them is really they are a platform or a floor, you might say, for building the enhancement of whatever you're using, acrylic, gel, fiberglass, cornstarch, whatever you're using, we're putting that on top of the form and on top of the tip to create a leverage to build it, right? So in a form, when we put our paper form on it, it's the same as the tip, except the tip we leave there because we've glued it on top of the natural nail. And the form we use as a temporary base to build our nail out, whatever enhancement you're using, we build it out on top of that. Then we take the form away. So essentially the same thing, it says that tips we leave there and forms we take away. So I'm gonna put my tip box away. Now I don't, I just wanna make a quick little note that tips are collected and held in these little compartments and the numbers coincide with each one. And as the number gets smaller, the tip gets bigger, but don't drop them. I learned the hard way. So Mary had asked the question, what's the difference between hybrid gel and poly gel? Is it the same? Well, essentially they are, except poly gel is a brand name. And they sort of coined it with the poly gel. Anybody thought it was just poly gel was the actual thing, but that was the brand name. And I believe that was from Gelish. So since then, a lot of companies have come out with a lot of different um, versions of their poly gel, which is just the brand name. It's a hybrid gel, and the hybrid is coming from the combination of the ideal of acrylic and gel mixed together, creating the hybrid gel, which is this. And this brand is Tammy Taylor. So let's just dump this little package out that they sent me. That was very nice of them. They just sent that along. And they have a nice brush. And they've got a primer. Oh, and they got a little dish. Okay, so the idea between a hybrid gel is most, oh, see, I wasn't happy with that thumb. And guess who came off? <laughs> so the hybrid gel comes generally in a tube, like that. And this basically is an alcohol. Some companies like Exclusive Nail Couture, they recommend you can also use the monomer. Whereas Gelish, the first ones that came out with the poly gel, they have an alcohol base and they're using it as a liquid like you would with liquid and powder, as in the monomer and the powder. So this is called Sculpt by Tammy Taylor. And that's what they've done. They provide a little jar and the liquid. So we'll put that over here, just for a momento. And look at what we got here. Ah, this is the Bonder gel base. And this is a nail primer. Okay. So let's put these right here for a sec and we're gonna prep the nail properly. Now, before we put anything on top of our tip, we wanna buff the tip slightly just to give it a little bit of grip, right? So I'm just gonna use this little buffer that I had in another kit somewhere. And I'm just gonna buff these tips ever so slightly. And that's why I didn't want a primer ahead of time because all this dust will just gather in that freshly prepped primered nail. So remember that, don't put any primer on until you've buffed this product. And I am gonna leave these quite long, I really like it. So I'm just gonna go over each and every one and while I do that, I'm gonna also fix my thumb. So you don't have to worry about, sometimes we wanna blend that tip line into the natural nail as much as possible, but because we're using a hybrid gel, they tend to be on the opaque side. You can't really get a hybrid gel super clear like you can a, a gel or even an acrylic. So you don't have to worry so much about that because we're gonna cover it up with the color. So I am going to cleanse the dust away. and it's gonna want us to put a nail primer on. So I'm gonna gently put a nail primer on all of me fingers. I don't have to go onto the tip. The hybrid gel will stick to the tip. 
without the primer. It's not necessary. Okay, and that will dry. Okay, so the Stuck On You is a Bonder gel base. And that is a gel. And I am going to paint on the entire thing. I don't want to oversaturate it near the cuticle. I'm going to, just like you're putting a gel polish on. Okay, I'm going to get that into me light. Full strength. And I'm gonna do that, I believe the bottle had said. You do wanna follow the manufacturer's instructions. If it gets a little warm, pull it out a little bit. And then just stick it back in, it should be fine. And this, we wanna nuke it for about 45 seconds and it's two minutes in a UV. This is an LED, LED and a UV actually. Now we have to decide on color. We have a natural clear, a warm pink and a soft pink. I'm not gonna do the natural clear because it's not totally clear and I know hybrids don't generally do that, but I always gravitate between the warm pink and the soft pink. And when I do acrylics, I sometimes combine them together. But I don't think we'll do that. I think I'm just going to be a big girl and I'm just going to pick one of these colors. I haven't actually seen them. It's very pretty. You know what, let's just throw it on one of your fingers and have a little look-see. Oh, that is pretty. Okay, and this one, this will be much cooler. Oh, oh, that is so pretty too. Oh. Well, I am gonna put a color on top. I think that's gonna be the next video. So I think, I think I'm gonna go with a lighter one. I mean, I love that darker one too, but I'm just in the mood. Maybe I'm anticipating summer. We got a bit of a snowstorm happening here in Victoria. I'm surprised we didn't lose our power for this video, but we're doing okay. So I am going to put, which one did I pick? Oh, it was not the warm pink. Let's put the warm pink away. We're gonna use the soft pink, they're calling it. To me, it's a little bit more of a cool pink. And we're gonna use the sculpt, right? That is the liquid that we need in between to mold this. I'm gonna fill that right up. Now, another person asked a really good question. Is hybrid gel easier to work with than acrylic when you're learning? Well, in my personal opinion and my professional opinion, yes, absolutely. I think hybrid gel is genius for learning. And I'll tell you why, look at this. Do, 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 do. We can take all the time in the world, okay? I'm just gonna play. And I am just pushing it around with this brush and the liquid. Look at this, I'm just molding it into whatever shape that I want. Now I'll tell you, if this was acrylic, this would be pretty much drying up now or curing up so much that we wouldn't be able to do this anymore. It would be over. <laughs> That's the wonderful thing about the hybrids. They're amazing. So we, we could like, you know, go for a jog around the block like I'm gonna do that, but. We could build another nail. We could talk about all the other colors. We could, you know, just have a little chin wag and it won't even move. It's gonna stay right there until we push it around a bit more. That is the beauty of these hybrids. I love them. I think they're, I think it's a brilliant idea, especially when we're learning. So a hybrid is basically gel that's thick like acrylic and it doesn't cure until you put it under the lamp. Yes, so it's acting like a gel because we have to put it under the light. It doesn't cure until it goes under the light. 
and it's acting like an acrylic because it's kind of got this molding shaping thing that we can do with it's a little bit more together not so uh, runny like sometimes gels can be with certain viscosities it's also acting like an acrylic because we use the liquid which is basically an alcohol to mold and shape it so when you see my wet cuticles there that's the alcohol see now it's kind of sticky see my brush is kind of sticky so i just get a little bit of the of the liquid and i'm back in the game awesome and I have to say look at that color <laughs> it's gorgeous so I'm just going to keep playing with it and bring it right to the end I'm absolutely loving this length and because you've used a tip half of the shape is really kind of done for you I mean I don't have to shape these at all if I don't want to so it really does take away a lot of the work So the other thing is, I mean, you can play with this forever until you make it absolutely perfect, right? And it's almost to that point. It would eliminate filing, basically, but it's way too thin. I mean, if I look down the barrel of that nail, that's just way too thin. That's not doable. So I need to add some more. So I have decided I can add some more now or I can just nuke it and then add some more. So I probably will do that. Wow. I'm just going to play with the cuticle, make sure it's absolutely perfect. You know, and I know I use that word perfect, but honestly, you guys, there is no such thing as perfect. And it's something that you make it so that it looks good to you. And if you're doing a client to them, and that's the moment that you're working for. You can always pick nails apart. I mean, no matter how good or perfect you think you've done the job, there's always something you can improve, but that's okay. It's totally okay. It's art and it's an expression, right? Okay. I think I'll just go on and add some more to the other ones and then I'll nuke the whole thing all together and then um, I'll just add where I need to for structure and whatnot. all the product that I need. Now remember I said, <laughs> it's kind of funny actually, remember I said you can just make it, you can apply all the product and make it perfect. Well, this is far from perfect, let me tell you. I just kept adding and adding and adding. <laughs> Thank goodness I know how to sculpt. So this little jar of, this is mostly um, alcohol and that's what you need to remove the sticky layers. I'm just rather not going to waste it. I'm just going to absorb it into a little cotton pad and I'm going to remove the sticky layers. So once you've cured it, for the minute that you need to cure your hybrid gel, you want to remove that sticky layer. And then you can start filing. And like I say, I just kept adding it. When I work with acrylic and gel, it sort of falls into place and then you sort of guide it. This stuff, you have to push it into place. And I guess I was waiting for it to fall and it didn't. So I kept <laughs> adding more and more. Before I know it, I've got this clumpy mess. So it's pretty funny actually. But I love sculpting, so we're going to have some fun sculpting these, and we're going to sculpt the beautiful shape that uh, I was trying to achieve with the so with the brush, right? So okay, so I am going to use my really awesome file here. It's an e-file, and I'm going to get. I don't need a really chunky bit. This is a hybrid gel. It's a bit softer than acrylic, so it files actually quite easy. So you can do a lot of it by hand, which I will do as well. This file particularly is from Light Elegance. And I'm gonna keep that square shape that the tip came in. It was really a nice shape, so I'm just gonna go with that. I haven't had long nails for a while, and I do wanna almond these up like you wouldn't believe, but a nice long square will be nice. I can shape them up later. Let's just do that. See how easy? It just files so easy. And then you get the, the proper grit. And this is a 180. And that's great for shaping too. And look how easy it just shapes up. 
So I'm just taking away all that bulk that I added and keeping my arch nice high point and then just gently going around the cuticle. And then shaping my free edge. Always looking down the barrel to make sure that you don't get, you know, it's too thick. And if it's too thick on one side, make it nice and even. Now that tip that I had put under, that's still sitting underneath there, of course, has a very strong C-curve. And it's really pretty, so I'm going to just work with that. And if you're using an e-file, you do it like this. Brace yourself somewhere and just go over. I don't do this unless I'm removing. That happens to fit right in that C-curve and just clean up the edge. But when I'm doing, I'm shaping, I'm going back and forth, back and forth. And I let the file rest in any spot that's a little bit thicker. You don't want to go over and over a spot that's good. And I'll always check down the barrel. Oh, it's almost there. It's a little bit thicker right here in this spot. So see, still I go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I'll check it. Ooh, that's looking good. Now I do look at it sideways too, and it's beautiful here in the arch, but it's really thick along here, you know, like that. Now having said that, on the very end, it's pretty almost right on. So the part that I find thick, which is right in here, I'm only going to hit that part. So I'm not actually hitting this part, and I'm not hitting this part, I'm actually just hitting right in here. That's what I find very thick. And when I say very, we're talking very, very tiny amount. But it's just enough that me no likey. It's looking good. So then I'll just kind of look it all the way around. And once I'm happy with it, then I'll move on to the other one. Right, and then I'll finish this one if you want. But then I'll shape up this one, just make sure that it's nice and smooth under the side. That's underside, right underneath. And right under this side. And always coming directly out from the sides of your thumb. That's looking good. Okay. Once I'm happy with that, I'll go and do that with every single finger. I love the sculpting part. In fact, if you like sculpting, I do teach classes here in Canada, in Victoria, BC. You can check my website for all that information. Okay, well, I'm very happy with that now. So now I'm going to just clean off all the dust. This is an alcohol-based cleanser. And then I'm going to put the top coat on. going to put a clear coat on this so we can see the pretty color through it in the final reveal shots. Beautiful, just glides on. Okay, we'll nuke it and let's check out the reveal shot. A little bit of oil. And thank you to Mary and Kathleen for those great comments. Very good questions and I get quite often about the hybrid and the poly gel. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll catch you guys in the next video.